Hey friends, today I am at the California Science Center in downtown LA and uh, we're going to check out some of the cool stuff inside. Let's go nerd up. So I'm in the space exhibit now and there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Just check out how meteoroid impact uh, affects these screens here which will take the place of some kind of shielding. So I'll show you in super slow motion. Pull the trigger. Impacts the first plate. I think the debris from the first plate causes a massive uh, impact hole on the second plate. You can see that debris from the second plate then carrying through and leaving pot marks in here but only the very smallest part of the meteoroid, the simulated meteoroid, makes it through uh, and basically just shrapnel and debris on the fourth shield. There's a gun that fires fake meteoroids at White Sands um, and this is the sort of damage that it leaves on real plates. So the simulation is pretty accurate but that's incredible. It must be kind of terrifying for astronauts to know that this stuff is flying around in space and can impact them at any time and does often. Well, that's incredible. Like, this is an example of a meteorite that uh, hit the Earth, Diablo Canyon. And so to protect against that, this is an example of the various layers that are found within the uh, standard sort of arm of a spacesuit. It's like 10 layers of stuff. Wow. Check that out. Neil had some really gnarly hands. <laughs> Look at them all like contorted. That one's like the claw. He's been playing too much Ms. Pac-Man on his uh, days off. I think that's eventually what killed him. Okay, here's a really cool experiment. A literal bell jar. <laughs> so we're gonna ring the bell in it. Okay, then we're gonna drop the air pressure. And listen to what happens to the bell. Okay, still depressurizing. Still depressurizing. And we are at a vacuum. It's true what they say in space, no one can hear your bell ring. gonna take a look inside what it's like to be on the ISS. Okay. I'm an astronaut. Here we go. Welcome to the I've traveled to space two times now, living and working on the space station and helping NASA move people and equipment safely from Earth to orbit and back again. It just pulls around your head. <laughs> The Destiny Laboratory isn't huge, but there's plenty of equipment packed into this space. Ooh. The walls are lined with science racks. So what they just said, which I'd never thought about before, was that in space, obviously, there's no gravity, so the carbon dioxide that you breathe out just pools around your head. So if they didn't have fans to suck out the excess CO2, you would literally create a little pool around your face in which you would suffocate. That is, that is crazy. I'm so glad they thought about that before they got up there. <laughs> this is why there's some seriously clever people working on, on these things. We keep another robot in here too, the Robonaut. We're only testing this model. But eventually, robot devices should be able to work alongside it. A nice collection of uh, space candy. Mmm, very appetizing. Broccoli au gratin? I'd eat that. I'd suck, suck it through a straw. Black coffee, peanut M&Ms. Nice. 
this video saying that it's not that difficult to get foods they like up in space. Although there was another part of the exhibition that said that to send a pound of butter into space costs $10,000. So uh, probably best to just uh, keep it to the bare minimum of essentials. Like Red Bull. Uh, the piece de resistance of the uh, exhibition, space toilet. No prize for guessing what goes in there. This is the Gemini, or Gemini as the Americans would say, 11 space capsule. Um, and check out the uh, remnants of the heat shield. This is what it was like after it re entered the atmosphere. Isn't that cool? It's kind of off kilter as well, all the, uh, the burn marks or whatever. And if you take a look in this cutaway, you can actually see, like, look how thick that is. That's amazing. Well, that was a very cool exhibition. Well worth the price of admission. However, there is one more space-related thing on this very site that is uh, worth seeing. Probably one of the greatest things I've ever seen with my own eyes, and we're gonna go take a look at it now. Okay, it's just through this rather unsuspecting little door. just the most incredible sight. I can't quite believe that it's right here, like in front of me. This thing is a legend of modern space travel. And now it's here in its final resting place. Well, actually, apparently, they're gonna move it to a purpose-built facility. Um, I even heard some talk they might be able to set it in upright, like launch configuration, which will be flipping awesome. But yeah, that is incredible. It's a little difficult to quite comprehend the scale of it on video. I mean, it's just enormous, absolutely colossal. And if you think that's big, just come around the back under this massive wing and check out the rocket ports on the uh, exhaust. Oh my word. Mm -hmm. 
So these are all missions of the various uh, space shuttles from the sort of late 80s into the 90s. And then you get to Endeavour's first flight, which was May 1992. And then on through the years, you got the Columbia, Discovery, um, Atlantis, and then obviously it continued right into the 2000s until May the 16th, 2011, the final mission. And here's one of the main engines. Seriously high tech stuff. They also have one of the Space Hab uh, capsules here, which is very cool. You get to see all the little storage pouches and stuff inside. Endeavour was the uh, shuttle that they commissioned to replace Challenger um, after that disaster uh, and it really did like a full tour of duty um, it's done a lot of incredible missions including repairing the Hubble Space Telescope um, let me show you before and after okay so this picture is before they repaired Hubble and then Endeavour went up they did some repairs and then the pictures looked like this Good work, Endeavour. Oh yeah, so I found some uh, concept model of how it's gonna look when they build the new pavilion, and Endeavour will indeed be stored in its upright launch configuration, which I think will just be absolutely spectacular. To see the uh, SRBs and the fuel tank on there as well will just be incredible. Absolutely incredible. So if you get a chance, head out here and see this. It is well worth the visit. And admission is free. So I hope that was as interesting for you as it was for me. Uh, join me back here in 2018, I think they said, when hopefully the new um, center should be built. Thanks for watching and see you next time.